So in this video, I just wanted to go over kind of the basics of how an impact game works. I'm going to talk about a game that I wrote called Resonant Raver. Uh, this is an example uh, from my book that I've gone through and, and done a lot more work on to make it a, a more full featured game. So this is the main game here. As you see, I'm at my local host here and I'm just loading this game locally. I click spacebar, I can go in and play the game. Standard impact game, I can go around shoot zombies. There's different levels and whenever the player dies, I'm actually just keeping track of stats and, and a whole lot is going on. The, the core part of this game is actually pretty straightforward when I have it set up here. If you look, this is the main project. And as you see, there's an impact directory. So if you had watched my other video that introduced kind of the beginning of, of working with impact, you remember that there's a libs folder. There's a media folder here, which is where all the artwork for the game goes. And then there's tools, which is used to compress the game and bake the game. And as you can see here, the main file for your game is going to be your index.html. As you can see here, I have classes for buttons if I'm detecting that I'm on a mobile browser versus a desktop browser. I have some tracking code. And then most important, this is where your main game lives on the uh, index page. So there is a canvas element, and when impact gets instantiated, it uses the name of this canvas. I also have a div with controls, so I can detect whether I need to use uh, these touch controls or not. So if you're on a desktop, I hide the touch controls. And the main game class, if you look inside of your lib and look inside of games, is going to be main JS. So this is standard for every game that you set up. Um, this class, of course, is a little bit more complex than other classes because there's a lot going on in here. But as you see, I have my main module set up. I have a requires block. So these are all the different levels that the game has. This is using the font. I have um, some other plugins, a custom plugin I wrote for a camera. Uh, these are my entities, such as my zombie and doors. And then I have a, uh, a class for doing local storage for saving game state. Uh, I wrote a class for tracking, so I can use Google Analytics to track my game. Uh, I wrote a string utility class, and on and on. And this is your main game. So your main game is going to extend the game class. And just like every other class in Impact, you're going to have an init, which becomes your, your main class. And there's you know a lot going on in here, but just to kind of walk you through the basics of how it works, I set up the game by setting up my tracking. I create a reference to my local storage. And then I also set up things like timers that I need in the game. I set up my camera and configure my camera. Um, I do any console. So here I'm doing some debugging just to check out the widths of particular items on the screen. And then also I set up my touch controls. And this kind of goes on and on. Um, as you learn more about impact, a lot of the stuff will make more sense but this is the basic structure of my game. I have all of my entities that make up my game in the entities folder. So there is the main player and he keeps track of how to shoot, how to jump, um, his life and all these other values. These are also all of his sound effects. I have zombies. Zombies are very similar to, to the player. Uh, there's sound, they handle their own movement. And then everything else, there's elevators, level exits, uh, out of bound areas. So when the player falls too far out, I have particles when the player explodes. And it's really good to break up each of your entities into their own classes so that it's easy to manage uh, all of your code. I also have all of my levels. So each one of these levels is created uh, by the level editor. If you were to look inside, um, it's also a class, but the level editor will actually take care of this for you. So there's no reason to do this by hand. So as you see here, I have the level editor open. So um, the level editor is called Weltmeister and it's also in your impact directory. So I will load up a level real quick to show you how my levels are set up. Uh, the level editor in impact is really powerful. You can have different layers. You can organize the layers. Uh, one of the layers that, that's going to be important is you have your entities layer, 
you have your collisions layer. So I can turn on what are my collision areas. So this marks things that are solid. Uh, and then I have my main layer, which is where I do all my painting for my graphics. So each of the layers have uh, values. So you can have a tile set, which will show you what tiles you're using. You can set the size of the tiles, the dimensions of the entire level, and then how far back distance is how far back that layer is from the camera. So if you wanted to do parallax scrolling, you can have uh, different layers that scroll at different times. And then this is also pretty important to keep track of, which is uh, pre-render in-game. What this allows you to do is pre-render the entire level. So if you're going to mobile, uh, you don't have all these different draw calls for each tile. It'll actually chunk out the map into much bigger images. You can also set up repeat and you can link this map with a collision. So every time you add a tile, it'll automatically add it to the collision. As you see, when I move around, I have this box here. If I hit spacebar, it will give me all of my tiles and I can go through and start painting tiles wherever I go. I can also hit Z to undo. Same thing with collisions. So these are the collision tile sets. So as you can see, Impact uh, now supports sloping at different angles. It also supports some of these really cool platform um, type collision detections where these arrows are, you can jump through this object up, but then you um, land on it. So these are four uh, little platforms. As you can see here at the top where my zombies get uh, spawned from, I, allow the, I don't allow the player to jump up through it, but that the zombies can still fall down. The last layer that's the most important is the entities layer. So these are all the classes in my game. As you see, I can create zombies or throw down pretty much anything I need. Um, if I wanted to create another elevator, I can put an elevator down. And then also I am doing something a little bit more advanced here. So as you see, there are these purple boxes and there's lines going all around. What I've done is I've set up targets and triggers in my game. So one of the, uh, the main players in my game is going to be this spawner, which spawns out different weapons. And what this does is I connect this spawner to each one of these doors so that when the player goes into a door, it tells the spawner to unlock another door and put a new weapon inside of that door. And as you see, in order to set up my targets and connect these all up, I simply do target dot one door as an additional property onto my entity. And this will automatically draw the connection for me in the level editor so that in my class, when it starts up, I get a list of targets and I can manually connect everything up. My elevators are doing some custom things as well. So they are connected to strings, which represent, you know, the string and the path the elevator is going to go on. And then these boxes here, which is the elevator floor, you see there's one hiding behind the elevator. I'll move it here out of the way. This represents where the elevator is actually going to stop. So it'll, it'll always fit itself into one of these floors. And as you see, there's a line between the two that this one's connected. If you look in my elevator, uh, here are the properties. I have target one as floor 2B, and I have target two as floor 1B. And then I also connect up the cord. So this is cord three and cord four. So impact is really in incredibly powerful. Another thing that I'm doing that's really interesting is going to be the uh, out of bounds. So this is an entity that simply waits for anything to fall inside of it and then it kills it. So if the player goes out of bounds uh, or a grenade falls down or a zombie falls down, this will automatically catch it and destroy it. And another neat trick to do is I also have a, uh, a class here called settings. And what I'm able to do is that each one of my levels, I'm I'm adding properties onto this entity. So you see here, I have uh, the default instructions. So whenever someone enters this level, this is the text that's gonna show up. So I'm using entities as well for uh, settings on each of my levels. So as you can see, Impact's level editor is incredibly powerful and allows you to set up some really complex interactions between the entities in your game. Once your game is done and you set up all of your levels, so as you can see here, I have all of my different levels. Once all of your levels are set up, you're ready to load them and play them in your game. 